In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up your RTL 2832U USB stick um, that you may or may not have tapped into your Yezu 857 rig uh, on the first IF. How to interface that with CAT control so you can control the receiver in HDSDR and have it control the radio and vice versa. Have the radio control the receiver in HDSDR. Uh, why would you want to do this? Basically, um, so you can see the correct frequency in the display. You can click on signals in the waterfall or the pan adapter and tune the rig to that frequency and transmit there if you like. Uh, it just basically gives you a full functioning second receiver. Um, you know, obviously the the 857 doesn't have a DS, uh, IFDSP. This gives you that option. As you see, we have a 3,000 hertz bandwidth. I uh, got somebody talking up here, and you can hear them in the signal. We just drop that down. They just kind of go away, which is something that's kind of hard to do with the 857. It's got an audio DSP. It doesn't work too well though. This just takes the signal completely out of the IF, um, which is kind of nice. So. You see, there's the interference again. All right, so let's get into it. Um, first, you know, let's just show this working real quick. Here's another signal down the band a little bit further. Let's click on him. And there we are. We're all now we're on 14171. And real quick on the rig itself, 14171. Sorry if you can't really see that. There you go. All right, so how do we set this up? First thing you want to do um, with your RTL 2832 hooked up to the first IF, which hopefully you can figure that out, is number one option you want to select swapped, swap I8 and Q channel 4X input. Um, basically, so doing this will get everything lined up between the, the radio and HDSDR. So lower sideband is lower sideband, upper sideband is upper sideband, and um, everything is correct. Otherwise, everything will be in reverse when you tune up and down the band and your sidebands will be reversed. All right, uh, second thing, input channel calibration for receive. Let's go in here. Uh, you want this to be set to audio, uh, excuse me, auto. If it's not set to auto, you will have some carrier spikes right at the DC, um, zero DC point in the display. Uh, this helps remove that. There's probably a better technical explanation out there for what this does. Uh, right here, it tells you right there, you could read that. Um, but I'm not gonna do that. Just set it to auto and you'll be good. All right, we'll click OK there. Let's go back to options. Um, between those two items, and then this one last menu here, you'll be set up correctly. So let's go to RF front end and calibration. You want to set the second option bubble right here. SDR hardware on IF output, and you, that tells HDSDR that you're going to be tapped into another radio uh, on its IF. And the IF frequency that we want is 68 megahertz, 68.330 megahertz. Uh, I have an offset of 9,000 hertz on mine to get away from the zero DC point, um, to get away from a little, that little bit of noise that hangs out in that area. So I've got mine set at 68.33 megahertz, I'm sorry, 339 megahertz. Oh, or, you know, this is obviously in Hertz, so we want to do 68339000, and that'll get you there. And then 9000 Hertz over here. That'll shift you, you know, 9 KCs away from the center point between the I and the Q. All right. One other thing on the Yezu, when you, I've got uh, everything kind of lined up on upper side band, uh, is I pretty much hang out on 20 and upper, 20 meters and upper, so I'm usually an upper side band, but. Lower sideband uh, will shift the frequency around um, on the Yezu, I guess, on the IF. Uh, plugged in 2300 and then that corrected everything and gives you the correct frequency readout in HDSDR. So these are the settings you want. Here, here, plug in that. You might need to adjust that up or down. Probably do the same for AM and FM and just haven't gotten around to that. Everything else, just leave that alone. Don't need to bother with that. All right, now let's go on to cat control. Let's go to options. 
And uh, so you want cat to radio, Omni rig, and you want to do the Omni rig setup. Just click this, and there's Omni rig. I'm sorry, this keeps blowing out. On contrast, let's turn this guy down. All right, here we go. You need to download OmniRig, number one. Um, it's out there, Google it, it's a simple download, it's free. Basically, it connects your rig to HDSDR and HDSDR to your rig, back and forth, syncs everything up. Uh, I've got COM port 2 running on mine, on your computer, you know, it's going to be different. It depends on what you've got running on the computer. If you've got, uh, like, for example, a sound card interface hogging up, COM2, then you can't use COM2, you have to use another COM. Um, it just depends on what you have installed. So, COM port 2 on mine is free, and that's what I'm using. I got a baud rate of 3,800, excuse me, 38,400. Everything else down to these last two items I left default. Uh, the pole and the timeout, pole initiation and timeout, I've got down to 100 hertz. Um, I'm excuse me, 100 milliseconds. If you've got it higher, there will definitely be a much larger delay uh, in the frequency read out between the AZU and then HDSDR as you tune around. Um, if you're if you're spinning the VFL on the rig, uh, if you use the default settings on this, there's a pretty big delay of what you see on the rig versus what you see on HDSDR. So. Even then, there's still a, a delay here. I'll, I'll tune the rig and let's watch the frequency go up and down here. It's it's okay. It's not as you see. It's not smooth. It's jumping several hundred hertz each time I tune. Um, it doesn't it doesn't show everything. So I got the rig set to fast tune. Let me slow it down a little bit. As you see, it's it's okay, but it could be better. Sorry, somebody's messaging me. All right. And let's go back to options. And Omni rig, you want, as we see, we've got Omni rig set up between the um, radio and the computer, or HDSDR actually. And it's online, so it's working. You want these two boxes checked sync to Omni rig. So the rig will sync with OmniRig, and then and in turn, you want this next box checked, so OmniRig will tell HDSDR what to do, and then vice versa, HDSDR will tell OmniRig what to do, which in turn will tell your radio what to do. So you have things sync back and forth both ways. So if I change frequency or mode on the rig, it will tell OmniRig, OmniRig will tell HDSDR to do whatever, and vice versa. And secondly, you want to have the HDSDR sync to the tune frequency, not the local os not the local oscillator. That's remember that's on your first IF. So if you have it synced here, it will correct. It will show the correct frequency display in HDSDR. Um, let's see what else I have going here. I've got enable TX button for rig one. Basically, that gives me the option to hit the TX button in HDSDR, which is here. And it will key the rig, you know, I'll put it in AM, key the rig, and basically tune the tuner. That's the only reason I even have that set. So there you go. That's how you set it up, everything, so that you can control HDSDR with your radio and vice versa. Control your radio with HDSDR. So let's turn up the volume here. We'll click on a couple of uh, frequencies in the pan adapter and see what we get. So as we see, we just tune into that one. And he stopped talking. Oh, there we go. That may be a little bit off frequency in the RTL. You can adjust that. Let's go here back to this screen. Um, you can set your frequency correction here in parts per million. And I've got my RTL AGC set on right now. I, I, I've been going back and forth on this. You don't want to use the tuner AGC, um, but this is, I'm not sure which is better. Are you leaving this on or off? 
and on 20 meters I've got a gain of 14.4 let's turn this down a little bit sorry and I'll show you what that does if you adjust it if we go down to zero that's the default and if you look at the pan adapter you don't have much going on uh, so as we raise it up we're at about seven right excuse me we're at about seven right now eight twelve point five fourteen which is about my sweet spot for this band this time of night uh, as I raise it up higher you start to see more interference uh, from other frequencies and um, you know probably from all over the HF band so as you see that's about 48 right there and nothing's usable so let's drop it back down to about 14 DB and there we go I run a buffer of 8 sometimes lower sometimes higher the lower the buffer you run the lower the delay between the uh, the actual received signal in the rig and the time it takes the computer to process that, that signal I think I'm not sure I haven't researched this you know this may be like um, power SDR the higher the buffer you run the the steeper the skirts are on the filter I don't know for that to be the case or not but Anyway, the higher you run, the longer the delay you have is the main number thing, number one thing I've noticed. Uh, the longer the delay you have between what you're hearing in the radio and what you're hearing in HDSDR. And usually I run a bandwidth of about 0.96. Um, and that, that works out for me. I can see the entire hand band or whatever band I'm on, a little bit above, a little bit below. And it just, you know, the way the waterfall and everything works out for me, I, I just like that the best. So. With that setting, no matter where you are on that band, that's what you're, you're going to see the entire band, even if you're at the top end of the band. Now, here's the problem I've been running into right here. This drives me crazy. Um, as you see, no matter what I do, every now and then this will zero out, and I have to actually tune the rig, and then it will just pop back in. So, I don't know. I'm just losing display, I'm sorry, the, the connection between um, the cat control between the rig and the computer after a little while. I've had Windows XP installed on this computer and 7, it does it on both. I don't know if it's something to do with a Profilic USB adapter, but uh, that's what I've got. Anyway, that's how you set up your Yezu 857, your 897, maybe your 817 to use cat control with uh, HDSDR in, a di in conjunction with the RTL 2832U USB stick that can be had for 10 to 20 dollars. Have a good day.